Hello and welcome to part three of this sock tutorial. I now have a sock that is only missing the toe and I'm going to show you how to do that slightly less chaotically than I showed you a heel uh, is the plan. So the first thing I want to do is change colours from the grey to a different colour. So I'm using blue and I want to do that on the side that has the big toe. So that's like in towards um, the other foot, uh, which means the big toe will be here. And I want to change here on the edge. To maximize, to like get the best uh, change of color, I usually count the number of stitches, so one, two, three, until I want to change colour. And then I just wrap the yarn around my thumb three times to figure out where I need to uh, rip my yarn. So one, two, three, this is where I need to rip my yarn. And so approximately there we rip. I'm sorry for the shaky camera. So when we do that, we'll almost precisely ish <laughs> end up in the right place. So I am making asymmetrical toes and um, I'm basing this on the previous like experiences of making socks for my toes um, where I've basically written down and memorized uh, the decreases that I need. Um, so I'll be doing decreases mainly on the side of the little toe because my toes slope quite quickly this way and not along the big toe. When I do it that way, the socks get less wear um, by the big toe um, compared to other socks where that area is always stretched out. So now we have our join and new yarn in a new colour. And I'm sorry if the light is a bit weird, it's raining and I'm using daylight. So we're just continuing with mum and stitch. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to show and not show in this tutorial. Um, the thing is, how much you decrease and where is very much up to you and what fits your foot um, and so this will just be like a suggestion, a possibility um, and then it'll be up to you to find something that works for you or for a loved one or I don't know, someone who wants a sock. So we matched out pretty well. This is the first stitch with some blue in it, blue in it, and it is on the edge here. Now, I think I'll just keep going and I'll come back when I near the end where I need to do de decreases. So now we have arrived at the little toe uh, side and I want to decrease twice uh, along this side. What I'm going to do is something that is very useful, usual, usual in knitting, um, which is to leave one normal uh, stitch on the edge and then decrease on either side of that normal stitch. So I'm going to do another normal stitch to get to the edge. And then when we fold here, we can see one stitch is like at the very edge so 
and there's two here that will get decreased. Then there's another, the edge one, that will get uh, a normal stitch. And then a decrease again. I'm sure it would be fine to do two decreases right by each other. This is just like, this makes sense to my brain. And you can see there's a decrease, normal and a decrease. Um, so now I'm going to continue knot binding and with no decreases on the opposite side and then back again to do the same ones more. I'll get you back then. So if you were doing this as a more um, symmetrical toe, um, you could do one decrease on either side. So I'm always doing um, decreases that are, uh, what's it called? Even numbers. I'm doing even numbers of decreases on this side, so you could divide it by two and split it up. So m my version is two decreases on this side and then none on the other, but you could do one and then one. So yeah, I'll see you back when I'm around here and ready to decrease again. We're now on round two, so I count this as round one. And now we're on round two, and we're going to do the exact same thing as we did in round one. So there's two together. One that's just normal on the edge here. And then two together again. And now again, we're not going to decrease for the big toe. And if you were doing a symmetrical toe, you could do one decrease here and then one decrease when you get to the other side for round two. But I am not I am doing an asymmetrical one with no decreases on the big toe side and all the deep, like most of the decreases on the little toe side. We are now at round three, so one, two, three. And for this round, I'll be decreasing four times. Um, this, as I said, is from trial and error. Um, many times earlier so if this is your first time making a sock be sure to try it on and see approximately how much uh, decreasing you need so this is what we've got from twice uh, decreasing two times which means that you'll be going in about the same amount from decreasing four times I have still not decreased anything in, on the other side where my big toe is going. So this time I'm not going to do any buffer stitches that are normal. I'm just going to do four straight um, decrease stitches. So one. And two. Three. I'm trying to center this on the edge, but um, knot binding sort of spirals a bit, so it won't be directly over the previous um, decreases. And four. I'm sorry if I'm not all in the shot but yeah this is the same decrease that I've been doing all the time so two stitches together so going through two loops so one two three 
four decreases. And now I'll keep going. And once again, for the third round, I'm also not going to decrease for the big toe. And I'll see you back for the fourth round. Back with round four. So we have one round, two rounds, three rounds. And again, we're going to decrease four times around this corner. So that's one, two, three, and four. So we're still on the little toe side and you can now see that we have a pretty good slope here. Um, now when I get round I'm going to decrease a couple of stitches on the other side uh, because we are now reaching the top of my foot um, and my big toe is now starting to decrease. Um, I'll do that and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like on my foot. So two decreases on the big toe side here. So this is what my sock looks like now. I've decreased twice on this side and then done normal stitches until here. Now you can barely see the edge there and you can see that my toes are just right here and so from now on I will do um, only decrease stitches until I get sort of a whole round I think so back around this the big toe to give that coverage over top um, I'll check in as I go I guess so the sock is looking pretty done from this angle, but here you can see there's still like a pretty, I don't know, a little bit of a hole. And if I try to connect it, it won't quite connect around my toes. And so I'll continue a little bit more. I've just been doing decreases all the way. Um, I think I'll do decreases until here or something. I'll once again be checking in. This this is actually how I do it, by the way. I try it on, I try it on, and I'll try it on, especially at the end here. Um, it's all about trying it on. So now I'm much more happy. This can be closed, so it closes over my toes. Um, and I'll end it right there. So now I'll show you how I finish a sock. Uh, we have these working stitches. I'm just going to tighten the last ones. So I'm going to the first one that looks sort of normal. Pulling that one. Then pulling the next one. And pulling the next one. And I'm always pulling from the top here. And then pulling the last one. So now I have a tightened one and I have this little hole and it is a bit too big to tighten into a circle. Uh, and so we're going to whip stitch it instead. I'm going to switch needles for this. So I'm switching to this tiny needle. It's pretty small. Uh, much easier to fasten the threads with. So for this I, I just keep the sock flat. It's like good if you've ended on one of the edges of the hole, which I have done here. And then you just stitch through the top edges and match the stitches up.
So if you find that you uh, decrease enough to make um, a little rosette like we did with the heel, then feel free to do that. Um, that's what happened with the other sock in this pair. It doesn't really matter how you end it. It will still be a sock and it will still have space for your toes if you made it big enough. So no trouble there. And then the last two should be these. And we've finished the sock. There is no hole anymore. It's just been finished like this. And now comes the very short process of um, fastening our threads. So for this thread, I'm just going to go through a stitch very close by and go on the inside to get the needle. Like so. And then we'll pull the entire sock inside out. Or rather push it inside out and we see that for one thing all the ridges are much more um, evident on the inside and here we have the two threads from the heel which I pushed through and we have the starting thread that we also need to connect. So for this I'm not using my big needle I'm using a small needle you can use any small-ish needle that you have lying around that has space for your yarn. And I'm also using a pair of snips. Or some snips, I don't know how you would say that. Um, and I'm just going to show you how I um, fasten these. So in the... So this bit is a stitch bit and this bit is a connection. And the connection is much um, tighter and leads to a much more tight um, place to put your um, thread. So I'm just going to go along the connections here, try to get in between every stitch and then pull the thread through. And then be sure to like stretch out the bit afterwards to make sure you don't um, lose your thread in there. So I'll do a little bit more, I think. So for that, I'll go to the next line, which I go do by going through a couple of the stitches. And then along this connection line. So the easiest one is way is down, then up, then down, then up. Let's see, where's the up? Somewhere. <laughs> it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I find this is probably enough. I've now connected all the way over here. Um, you could keep going. If you want to, I'll do a couple more, I think. This is the only bit that actually needs, like this and the ending of the heel is the only, are the only bits that needs connecting. All the other ones are sort of kind of for show because um, needle, needle binding is knots, so it won't unravel. So now I'm happy with the connection uh, or like the hiding of the thread and I'll just snip it and that's it for that thread um, then we do the heel and when you do like I do and do color work or like different colors for different sections you want to hide your thread in the correct section because if not it will be visible so I'm just going in a, a connection stitch on the heel here so this is just the beginning thread for the heel and i'm burying it in this brown section i 
like so. I'm happy with that length and let's snip it. Then we have the heel end, which also needs this. Here I try to um, sort of continue in the direction that the rosette is. So let's go this way. And then through these connection stitches. The connection stitches on the heel are pretty tight because they're always like the end uh, at the end they're always um, decreasing and so you get double tight which is very useful so just go around like this and maybe a little bit more and to do that i'll go to the next row For the next row just a couple in here let's see yeah like so that's good and i stretch it out it should be good now we just have the edge loop now the edge thread the beginning and for this one, I connect it through the first, like the first few connection stitches down into the next row and then along here. And I usually don't leave a very long starting thread, but it doesn't really matter. I've never had them come loose. They always seem to stay put, especially with this yarn. It may be different, maybe different with a different yarn, but this yarn gets slightly felted now. Like the next step is to put them in the washing machine for an hour and felt them slightly. So, um, so definitely helps keep the threads in place. So let's see. Like so, and now we can snip that. Now the sock is finished, but inside out. So let's turn it. And this is our finished sock. So now, if we look at it, this is the uh, starting point. You can see it has a notch. And this is the big toe edge with more of a slope on the other side. So I hope you weren't too confused about the colours of the heels and the toes, but I did alternate between the two pairs, like the two socks in the pair. So I have one with a brown heel and a uh, blue toe and one with a blue toe, blue heel and a brown toe. and. I'm really happy with these socks. They're longer in the cuff than I usually make them. And I think that's going to be really cozy. As I said, the next step is to put these in the washing machine. Um, Vandra is like this. Vand Vandrian uh, requires washing post uh, finishing. Um, so these are going to get washed at 40 degrees Celsius for about an hour. I think mine does 50 minutes with full uh, spin and no like and with normal detergent not wool detergent um to give them a bit more fluff and help them like felt just a little bit um it won't actually affect the fit much um is what i found i was quite nervous the first time but i can now like safely make things to fit before washing and assume that there will be the same post wash. So thank you for joining me for this um, tutorial series. Um, I may do like a roundup theory 
part where I just go through all the tips and tricks without all the waffling in between, um, especially for the heel. So um, ask me any questions you might have for that down below and I will see you then. Bye.